Welcome to the Cardiovascular Pulse, where we dive into medical breakthroughs, leading technology, and healthy lifestyles. Join us as we empower you on your journey to a healthier and stronger you. Joining us today, we have Dr. Matthew Finn. Dr. Finn is an interventional cardiologist for Cardiovascular Institute of the South in Houma and Raceland. Welcome, Dr. Finn. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me in the studio. So you've been part of this team now for almost two years, and you've been a great asset. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you specialize, I know, in treating artery and vein disease in the legs, and that's where your interest is. So today we're going to talk about pulmonary embolism. So I know pulmonary refers to the lungs and the respiratory system, but beyond that, can you tell us what that is? Uh, so... An embolism is, is a broad term that describes something that moves from another place. So in pulmonary embolism, we typically talk about a blood clot that moves from the legs, typically the thigh vein, into the lung and can make individuals quite sick in certain circumstances. So how does a clot like that form in the vein? So there's usually three common reasons we talk about for why people get blood clots in the leg, and they're commonly called DVTs, or deep vein thrombosis. Um, so you may hear that term kicked around. Uh, DVTs form uh, for a variety of reasons, but we talk about in med school a triad or three things that we always like to ask about. One, the first is stasis. So long trips, travel, generally over three hours um, where you're sitting in one place, long plane flights, things like that, uh, can lead to decreased blood flow in the legs and, and then lead to a blood clot. Two is trauma. So an injury, an injury to the leg or a surgical procedure uh, that immobilized the patient, um, that can lead to blood clots as well. And then third is uh, increased risk of blood clotting due to another circumstances. That's called hypercoagulability or high risk of clotting. Some conditions that can cause hypercoagulability would be uh, cancers, some cancers, uh, or family genetic problems that lead to clotting. Okay. What would a patient experience? What would they feel in their legs if they have this? And how do they know what to do if they're feeling these symptoms? Yeah, this is a great question. So with the blood clot, you may experience nothing. Um, and some people have old blood clots that they may, may or may not have known about. And you may not have acute or rapid onset symptoms. But in the typical case, you get swelling in one leg and not the other. You can get redness or the leg can turn a, a darker shade or even a bluish color. Uh, so that, the, those main symptoms. And then you can also get pain, stiffness in the leg, or, or trouble walking. When a patient presents with these symptoms, how do you go about diagnosing and treating this? And so for DVTs or leg, leg blood clots, uh, DVTs can also happen outside the legs, but for our conversation today, they're most commonly in the legs. Uh, I recommend seeking care, uh, either coming to the CIS clinic to get a evaluation, usually we want it to happen pretty quickly, so I'd recommend same day if you're really worried about a blood clot. Um, or you can go to the emergency room or an urgent care. Usually it's diagnosed with an ultrasound uh, where we look at the vein and see if we can see the blood clot there. I understand that there are some new treatments coming out for PE. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So what happens with the PE, with the DVT, is it moves to the lung, and then that causes a blood clot. In the, or that lodges in the lung and can cause strain on the heart, shortness of breath, chest pain. And our goal is, in very severe cases, we like to try to remove that clot, obviously, and make the patient feel better. Because, uh, you know, it was in the leg and now it's in the lung and preventing flow from the lung to, from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart. Um, and it, it can make patients feel really poorly. So the new treatments are basically to put a, a sterile tube into the lung under x-ray and aspirate or suck out that, that clot. 
and patients can have an immediate benefit from this. I would assume also that the recovery time is faster. Yeah, so many of these patients don't need to go to the ICU, even if they were very sick and would have been headed to the ICU before the procedure. Afterwards, they frequently can go to a regular floor. That's how much improvement we see. It's amazing how the technology really improves the level of care we're able to provide. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and we've been working hard to um, to move the field forward for many years. We started with clot-busting drugs, and then we used catheters to deliver clot-busting drugs to the lung directly. And now we've moved to just sucking the clot out. And it seems like with each step, we're getting further and further improvements in our treatments. That's amazing. So what is it about this particular condition that interests you in treating it? I think the the need for progress is what drew me to it, and also the exciting technologies that were coming out when I was going through training. Uh, it's really an exciting time in pulmonary embolism care. Um, so I think many people, and I'm not alone in this, in the cardiology community are excited about these technologies and the what we can offer to patients to help them. It's really a breakthrough for patients who may be suffering from these conditions, especially a condition that's so prevalent in our area here in South Louisiana. Right, right. So if someone is feeling uh, maybe some swelling in their leg, they have a concern and they go to the hospital, uh, what can they expect? Yeah, so for a blood clot in the leg, um, well, usually they'd be admitted through the ER, come into the ER and do an ultrasound on the leg. Depending on the size of the clot and the swelling, you may be placed on a blood thinner uh, in the ER and sent home if uh, the swelling and symptoms are relatively minor. If they're more serious, you could be admitted to the hospital, put on a blood thinner drip, and then we may talk about trying to remove that clot to prevent swelling in the leg in the future. That's called... Uh, post-thrombotic syndrome, uh, where the leg can be swollen for a long period of time. That's why we encourage patients to come see care early, early on, um, is so we can make a decision whether or not we need to try to remove the clot from the leg. Um, if, if there's concern that the, tr the clot traveled to the lung, for example, pulmonary embolism, um, then Patients typically experience chest pain, shortness of breath, difficulty walking, and that's quite concerning. So obviously we want patients to come to the ER in that scenario. And then what to expect when you get to the ER for that, we would typically do a number of tests. Foremost is a CT scan. There's blood work that's very helpful for us uh, in diagnosing and managing pulmonary embolism. And then we also like to do an echo or an, or an ultrasound of the heart to see how the heart's functioning, see if there's any strain on that right side of the heart, which pumps blood to the lung. And all those factors will help us decide whether or not the patient needs to go to a procedure to remove that clot from the lung. Once a patient would have a clot aspirated, what is the follow-up care like? So I, I like to see patients usually at one and three and maybe six months after and we usually repeat an ultrasound around three months. We may repeat a, a CT scan or what's called a ventilation scan, ventilation perfusion scan, just to see if there's any clot left uh, that could put patients at risk for a longer term condition or high blood pressure in the lungs. Uh, so we wanna monitor, make sure we've properly treated the pulmonary embolism. And then we also work with the hematologist or the blood doctors to decide how long patients need to have blood thinners. And lastly, we try to figure out a cause, uh, like we talked about with that triad from before. Like, why did these patients develop a blood clot in the leg or the lung? And is there a, a modifiable risk factor that we can we can treat? Sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Certainly, for our patients experiencing this, this has been very enlightening. They know that they should see a cardiologist uh, here at Cardiovascular Institute of the South if they have any concerns. So thank you for joining us and helping us learn about this topic. Yeah, please come see me if you have any concerns for this and, and don't wait because this can be a, you know, an important illness that needs to be treated rapidly and diagnosed correctly. We hope that this has empowered you on your health journey 
If you have health concerns, visit Cardio.com to learn more or request an appointment. Make sure to follow this podcast as well as CIS on social media for updates. Thanks for listening.